I have a great story about Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis became a very, very almost pardon upon part of the family. Uh, Sinatra was very close with my father when Sammy decided to marry May Britt, uh, who was white. As you know, Sammy was uh, uh, an Afro American Jewish person. So that in those days was a couple of strikes against you, which my father did not like any prejudice whatsoever. He was actually politically correct in the 60s and 70s, but not to a fault. So Sinatra was very fond of Sammy, which for good reason. And his his core, his nucleus was called the Rat Pack. I don't like that word rat whatsoever, but uh, that was his core. That's what they were coined. It was Sinatra, Sammy Davis, Dean Martin, Joey Bishop, Peter Lawford. Out of that relationship, Peter Lawford was married to a Kennedy. And that's how Sinatra and the Kennedys came to be. And Sinatra had almost a romance with John F. Kennedy. And I don't mean in a sexual way. And if they did, so be it. But not the point. It's not true. But he was enthralled with John F. Kennedy as a whole nation was. And Joe Kennedy, for lack of a better term, uh, was a man of uh, many uh, nefarious uh, talents. And uh, I was a big fan of John F. Kennedy myself. He was a war hero. And uh, what had happened was when Sammy Davis announced he was marrying May, uh, May Britt, who was very good looking, I believe she was Swedish or Swiss, I think Swedish, was a, a sex symbol and a very good actress. And she fell in love with Sammy. And Joe Kennedy stepped in and said he would stop the relationship between John and Frank Sinatra if Frank Sinatra would agree to be best man at his wedding. The rippling effects caused... Uh, Sammy to be placed back on the Green Book. Those that you are not familiar with the Green Book, it's not that long ago, and it was a really unfair thing. Uh, black entertainers, sports figures, and everything just couldn't eat in certain places down south and out west, so they had a Green Book where they could go. So you could come and entertain, and in that Green Book, they suggest you, and it was and not the standard they should be treated with. And it was a very, very unfair practice. And I sincerely tell you, it is not good for any person to be treated that way, to be hailed as a superstar in your own rights and not be allowed to eat with people or sleep or stay in the same or use the same bathroom. Uh, it was one thing that Joe Colombo with the Italian American Civil Rights League. At this point, the Italian American Civil Rights League wasn't as preeminent, but he did found aid Italians of American descent not only to overcome the plights and the prejudices of Italians, to join with other groups, and that came to his demise. Uh, with the with the assassination plot, but we'll go into that another time, and that's a story for another day. So that was the first meeting of Joe Colombo and Sammy Davis when he got green booked. What they did is they only let Sammy allowed in the casino, not in the hotel in Vegas, some of them, and not in the restaurants. So naturally, he was gambling up a storm just to be able to have access to his friends, the Rat Pack. And where would he go after the things? Everything back to a, a, a substandard hotel and a place. And Sammy didn't mind. He was a guy for the people. He would talk with people. He loved them. He was a vaudevillian. Jojo Dancer was his nickname. He played that part. He played it well. So my father used his influence to, A, crush the debts that Sammy was put into and make them reasonable because he ended up having to entertain for free because all he could do was stay at, and he wasn't even allowed to eat in the lounges. So in order to be in the casinos where he entertained, he had to be gambling. And he was also developing a gambling problem from that. So he, my father stepped in and used his influence to make sure that Sammy or no other person was green booked in these casinos. And it was a successful endeavor. Whatever tactics he used, they were not violent, but they were effective. To date, Sammy had become a great ally, and there's more stories about Sammy later on in Prejudices that I will tell you. Uh, Sammy died before his mom. She still wrote me. When my father was injured and semi comatose, after the shooting, Sammy came to the hospital every day for three months and would visit my father and come to this home every time he was in town. And his mother wrote us regularly. I forget what year she died. But what a very, very nice woman. We never forgot what a pioneer he was for the black people and for the Italian-American Civil Rights League and for the Jewish community. And he never forgot his true friendship with us. Uh, I hail Sammy. I know he's in a good place and he's looking down. 
And uh, uh, that is my story for today.